Hello, my name is John Petsy. I'm principal and co-founder of Sky Foundry, the developers of SkySpark Analytics. And today I want to talk to you about applying data analytics in facilities and uh, suggest how we need to rethink our approach to applying data analytics because the process really starts with exploration. Let's start by talking about how we actually create value with data analytics. And, you know, simply put, we create value by detecting patterns in our data. Those patterns could represent outright faults, deviations, anomalies, and the calculation of KPIs that we then track over time to detect trends and anomalies in our key performance indicators. But all of this leads to opportunities for savings from improved performance reduced operating and energy costs. And the reason we need to apply analytics to our facilities really starts with a very simple question. Do we know how our building systems really operate? Not how we think they do or how we hope, but what they're really doing on a minute-by-minute -minute basis every day. Well, if we think we do, we should be able to answer these questions, right? Who's watching to make sure? Who's verifying that what the systems are doing is correct? That the uh, control strategies were well designed and properly implemented? That the assumptions those control strategies were based on uh, were correct and are still correct for any changes that might have been made to the facility? And that the equipment systems are still running as expected? You know, they haven't been interfered with or overridden or equipment has um, degraded over time. For example, a valve won't close off completely, so you're simultaneously heating and cooling. You know, the reality is buildings are just too complex for this to be done solely with manual effort. There's too much data. There's too many systems. So that is the role analytics fills. Right? Software that can automatically look at the data, automatically detect patterns. But that raises the question of where do we start in applying analytics? Common questions we hear, do we need to connect to everything in our buildings? Every piece of equipment, every system, getting live streaming data, do I have to go all in just to get started with the analytics? And that's really the topic I want to spend time on today because the reality is that analytics is about exploration of our data. And here's an analogy I think is helpful. You know, Lewis and Clark, the great American explorers of the early 1800s, they didn't know what they were going to find on their westward journey to the Pacific Ocean. But there was enough belief in the potential value that that exploration was funded and it was undertaken. Well, that's how we need to look at analytics as well. You know, embarking on a project to apply data analytics to our facilities, our meter, our equipment data, needs to be viewed in a similar way. It's a process of exploration. And that makes it different from other types of investments, other energy conservation measures that we might invest in. And that brings up some key points about how we're going to get started with the analytics project. You know, we have a tendency to look at anything we do in the built environment as a Engineering project, you know, something that can be predefined to the finest detail. We're going to have a known end result. We design our building. We design an HVAC system, a chiller plant, an equipment upgrade. You know, these are all examples of things that can and should be engineered in detail before we begin the process to construct. But you know what? When we're talking about applying analytics to our building system data, exploration is a more fitting analogy. And there's a number of different reasons for this, but the key point is that owners need to look at an investment in data analytics differently than they do other investments. Let's talk about some of the differences. The first and perhaps the most important is that the end result is unknown. Until you acquire the data from your systems and apply analytics, you don't know what the data can tell you. You don't know whether systems are performing correctly or not. The analytics is there to identify the issues, the faults, the trends, those opportunities for savings and improvement 
in performance and efficiency. And in, so until you know what the data is telling you, you can't determine what actions you're going to take in response to the results and what benefits you're going to get. This issue makes it very hard for many organizations to evaluate and approve data analytics projects because the justification approaches they use for other types of investments just don't fit. Those are for things that have a known end result, a calculated savings. A different approach is required when we're looking at analytics. There's another key difference. All buildings are different. My building's different than yours, right? Buildings are highly variable. The data you can get, the systems you have, how the facilities you use. You know, not all building systems have the same capability to provide data. Some may be limited to the, due to the age of the system or the feature set they had. Others sometimes are limited by proprietary restrictions. And uh, often that comes as a surprise to owners when they start an analytics project and attempt to get data that you know, they thought they were going to have easy access to. That is part of the exploration process, in fact. Owners and operators are often not fully aware of even what data they have and those challenges in accessing it accessing that data. We need to realize that this is part of the exploration process and for most organizations there's a number of unknowns related to this. Finally though, the project scope is variable. What are we trying to do? You know, analytics is a tool and it can be used in many different ways from very simple projects to very sophisticated projects. The goals we set those define the scope of the project. So here's a good example. You know, we could have a very large building, a 1 million square foot building, and we could start simply by applying analytics to the interval meter data from a main electric meter. We could identify load curves, demand peaks. We could compare our profiles and performance to similar buildings for benchmarking, etc. We could compare our energy use profiles to our electric rates to identify whether we're on the right rate. Maybe there's savings to be had by simply changing to a different rate structure. Or we could take that same building and we could acquire the data from all of the environmental systems, right? from the central plant, the air distribution systems, the terminal units supplying the individual rooms, and we could apply fault detection algorithms on all the equipment systems. What's the difference? The project scope. Both approaches have value. Both are going to enable different levels of insights. They're both going to take different amounts of effort and have different costs. But they both have value. So how do we deal with the uncertainty? How do organizations assess moving forward with analytics and get the justification approval to move forward? Well, one of the first things we suggest is look for proof in the market. Success stories abound. There are literally tens of thousands of successful applications of analytics, over billions of square feet. Look for those case studies. Engage with owners at your conferences, uh, industry associations, trade shows. Don't stop when you hear a single good or bad story, right? Uh, you'll find outliers in all cases. But there's solid, consistent proof of the value of analytics. That's a great place to start. But then how do we ensure success of an analytics project? Well, the first thing that we suggest is that you plan organizational involvement. And the reason for this is, you know, analytics identifies issues, but you only save money if you act on the findings. So that means you need to know how you respond. So for example, if I told you that you had 20 problems with your systems today, how would you be able to respond? How would you triage and assess priority? How would you uh, allocate funds? Would your internal teams do it? Would you outsource the response work to correct issues with your systems? So one of the most important suggestions is start with a manageable project scope through which you can prove the value of analytics. You want a manageable low risk project. You don't want to try to do it all as the first step in your journey with analytics. So how do we get across that chasm, right? Well, we make it easy by proving value with a shallow dive project, a small, low risk project that delivers fast results and can prove that 
applying analytics to our data will generate clear financial value quickly. So you want to identify that low-hanging fruit. That will lead you forward into long-term success to do more with analytics. As an example, a light touch. Start with energy data that you can probably get. Get uh, interval meter data. Minimize the project cost and, and the risk. Right? And think about it. You can avoid your IT hassles. You don't have to have a live connection and getting real-time streaming data and deal with network security issues. You can start via what's called sneaker net, export data. Get the interval meter data from your utility company. With this data, you can then load it into the analytics software and prove ROI quickly, which shows quick, clear results to the organization, to your team, and to the people that you're requesting funding from. Now, we got a great case study on this. Um, example of an organization with well over 100 buildings, and they started just that way. Interval meter data and an Excel spreadsheet that had all of the occupancy times for all of their tenants. With that, they were able to define quickly and identify buildings starting too early, buildings running too late, buildings where schedules had been overridden and they were running 24 hours a day. They had almost immediate financial benefit that proved the value. After that, over time, over a couple of years, they deployed deep analytics down to every piece of equipment in their 100-plus building portfolio, and they gained financial value at every step, every phase. That is what you need to look at to help address the financing decisions to move forward with analytics. But as we talk about starting with low-risk projects and starting cautiously, it's very important to point out that is not the same as staying on the sidelines and not doing anything. And one of the things we've seen over our 10 years of helping customers is this uncertainty with what will analytics find can lead to decision paralysis and organizations don't move forward. And that's typically because you know the funding and decision processes, the procurement processes are all tuned to projects that can be engineered in great detail and the savings can be predicted and calculated ahead of time. And as we pointed out, that's not a fit for the exploratory nature of data analytics. So this overfocus on pre-engineering a perfect end result will actually prevent owners from moving forward with steps that could result in fast, clear, significant financial return. So in order to move forward, we have to help organizations understand the reality that data analytics is an exploratory process. And the results are going to identify specific actions that need to be taken. Now, those actions those will be well suited to a more engineering approach, right? To do the analysis, the cost justification, et cetera. But identifying those issues, well, that's the role of analytics. And, and this little conversation, um, mock conversation with a customer, I think brings that point out. So, hey, John, this all sounds great, but you know what? I can't sell a project without a hard ROI. Well, you know, I can't tell you the ROI because I don't know what we're going to find by applying analytics. That's what analytics are for. It's about getting you the actionable information, finding the issues that are costing you money and energy waste. Yeah, I know, but that's all well and good, but I need an ROI. Is there a way you can give me an ROI? So I think for a second, I said, well, maybe there is. How about this? Will you guarantee to fix everything? that I find with our analytics. And the customer says, well, no, I can't do that. Well, I say, well, why not? Well, John, I don't know what you're going to find. Exactly. That is the point of analytics. It's exploratory. And we need to realize this. Analytics are not a thing. They're not a physical thing that you're going to install and get an immediate benefit from. Analytics in reality, is a journey. It's not like the purchasing LED light bulbs, right? You can do a quick calculation. If we convert from our conventional lighting to LEDs, we're going to save X. Pretty easy to calculate and analyze. But applying analytics to building systems, it's not like simply buying uh, new equipment with lower energy consumption. 
you can't calculate the exact savings ahead of time. There's great supporting information from case studies, and if you start small, you'll get proof in your organization. But analytics are a tool. They enable us to see how our building systems are really performing, identifying those faults, those deviations, and identifying those opportunities for savings. But we have to keep in mind, achieving benefits from analytics is going to require action to address the findings. It's not and install and forget it investment. It's a continuous journey because you know what? Buildings change, equipment systems degrade, equipment fails, issues reoccur after repairs, new issues appear. Buildings are highly dynamic, they're alive. Stuff happens over time. So you need an ongoing use of analytics. That provides operators with a continued watchful eye on all your equipment systems beyond what human beings can do on their own giving them the actionable information to continuously manage their assets and reduce operating costs. But as we said, make sure you have a plan. How will you react to the findings? It's easy to look at case studies and see the examples of other organizations. How will your organization respond to the findings? Well, I want to leave you with this thought. Data, it's a new form of financial value. With the tools, with analytics, you can basically mine your data for financial value. That is how analytics benefits organizations. Our company, Sky Foundry, produces the SkySpark analytics platform. It's the leading IoT data and analytics platform in the built environment. It's been deployed to well over 1 billion square feet, over 18,000 facilities around the world. Tremendous success stories for it. We'd love to talk to you and help you with more information to evaluate our technology and your analytics journey. Please contact us at skyfoundry.com. Again, my name is John Petsy. Thank you for spending time with us today. We appreciate it.